there are a lot of romance anime out there, and I'm sure you're aware of that. It's one of the most populated genre of anime. And there are many different types of romance anime that you will watch for many different types of reasons. I mean, you have harem where you go because you want to pick a team and root for them. And when they lose, inevitably, because odds are they will, uh, you get very sad if you actually go invested. Or you have romance, which is just pure, wholesome, two people having some good fun and getting to know and fall in love with each other. And then you have the absolute uh, debauchery that is something like DXD, which is also harem, which is just... Well, you know what Etchy is. I mean, let's be real. If you don't, well, you've got a whole world to tap into uh, if that's your type of thing. But there are also romance anime that are romance anime because they're called romance anime. How many times can I say romance in this video? If you count and put it in the comments, I'll uh, like and pin your comment. Uh, if it's right, I don't know. I'll check. Probably won't. But there are also romance anime out there that you should watch, not because of the romance, but because they are good in their own right regardless, and have other things that you should enjoy, or perhaps that they're called romance anime, and yet uh, the romantic elements are not uh, the focus of the story. And well, this is a video of me recommending you a handful of those. So, yeah. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Bakuman. Now, Bakuman, uh, to initially pique your interest, is by Obata Takashi. He did the art for the manga. Um, and I also believe the same writer as Death Note uh, also wrote the story for this. They're a pair, uh, typically. Uh, yes, Bakuman is a story about two kids who want to become mangaka. They want to make, well, one of them wants to make manga, the other one uh, is less wanting to, but is a good artist. He really likes, he used to really like art. And they end up, you know, making manga. And that's the premise, the, well, the focus of the story is them making manga, the uh, trials and tribulations and the drama that go along with that, and delving a little bit into how the manga industry works. And it's a very, very good story. But how is it a romance? Well, the main character has a love interest, and so does our um, secondary main character. They both have love interests. However, the romance in the story is very much a side thing. You could say it's also the driving force of the plot in some regard, as you'll find out if you watch it. However, it's much more of a backseat thing. It doesn't have a huge prevalence in the story. Yes, it does influence a lot of our characters' decisions. However, you won't get many impactful romantic developments constantly. There won't be all those cute scenes that you'd expect from, say, something like Toradora, which I'd say is a much more romance-focused. While heavily character-focused, there is a lot more of the romantic focus of the story, you know, characters trying to get other characters together and the like. Whereas Bakuman is less so that and more so what leads to uh, that at some point with a heavy, heavy focus on the manga industry and manga itself. And it's a very, very good story that I highly recommend you go check out. And then you have, well, that was a really awkward transition. I just went straight through it. Let, you know what, let's carry on with it. And then you have romance anime that are, that have something that you just, they're romance because there's romance there. However, Similar to Bakuman in the sense, however, it's a bit more. What you should take away from it is a bit more serious, I guess. And that is an example of that. I actually have two of these. Is the Pet Girl of Sakura So. So the Pet Girl of Sakura So. Um, I've already made a video talking about it, but it. I've, so I won't really go too in detail in it here. Uh, there'll be a link, probably be a card to it somewhere in the top right at this point. So go check that video out if you want. But the Pet Girl of Sakura So, it's not more serious. The romance is there. However, I don't think you should watch the Pet Girl of Sakura So for the romance. You won't get the best experience if you do. You can definitely enjoy the romance because it is good. However, I personally think that you should watch Pet Girl of Sakura So for the characters and their dilemmas and how they grow and develop and everything that happens to them and the things they do throughout the story instead of trying to push shipping them together well yes there is definitely the whole characters def getting together and trying to get together throughout the process of the story but that is nowhere near the main th uh, main takeaway of pet girl sakura so as in my opinion not what you should watch it for and that's why it's in this video because it's a romance anime you should watch not for the romance and in a similar vein we have my personal favorite anime origairu or my team romantic comedy is wrong as i expected or I butchered that Japanese pronunciation. I'm ever so sorry. I'm not really. But anyhow, Origaru, again, 
takes aspects of what I've talked about with Bakuman and Pet Girl. There is romance there. There are cute scenes. However, it's the characters, their developments, everything they go through, how they change. Well, that's what developments are. Good job, self. And everything that they say, the dialogue, their interactions outside of potential romantic ones, those are what you are watching Origaru for. Not for the um, the romance that blooms during the story. Uh, well, specifically at the end, there isn't much earlier on. And that's part of why I say this is a romance anime that you should watch not for the romance, because the romance isn't really a big thing until right, right at the end. And it's not really pushed heavily, I should say. There is definitely some, uh, you know, touch of romance earlier on in the story, and it's very cute, and I very much enjoy it. However, those cute uh, romantic scenes won't be as apparent or as... You know, there won't be as many of them as there would be in, say, something like Fruits Basket, which is another romance drama, a very good romance drama. Go watch that. But I think Fruits Basket is an, is a romance anime you should watch for the romance because that is a lot more there. The characters do have a lot more romantic tension in Fruits Basket than they do in Origairu, at least during the first, like, season and maybe up until about the second half of season two. But Origairu, I absolutely love. The characters in it are fantastic. The story is fantastic. The music is fantastic. The way the characters grow and develop is some of... It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. I have made a pretty shit video on it in the past, but it's a video nonetheless if you want to go watch it. I won't link this one. You can go find it on my channel page. It's pretty far back. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love the series, and I do definitely want to talk about it more in detail in the future. So I, I will. Next up we have a romantic comedy. Well, a the last, like, three have technically also been romantic comedies, but that's beside the point. This one is very much a romantic comedy, and that is Kagi Sama Lover's War. Now, I'm sure you've heard of it, and it is a romance, very obviously. However, this is something you probably didn't watch for the romance. Yes, the romance is there. It's the whole reason that uh, the comedy is happening. However, be real with me. You're watching Kagi because it's funny, not because it's a romance. Like, come on. That's why you're watching it. You're watching Kagi because it's absolutely hilarious, Assuming that it's your type of comedy. If you don't like the dry, kind of overdramatic, you know, that type of thing, the overdramatic, very dry delivery, if you don't like that comedy, then yeah, you probably won't like, you probably didn't like Kaguya, and you may have only watched it because of uh, the romance, the subtle romance elements in it. But Kaguya, something you're probably watching because it's absolutely hilarious, and season two touches on some more, like, quote unquote, deeper topics that I absolutely love. That's why season two, I prefer to season one. But that's by the by. Kaguya is another romance anime you definitely need to watch if you like comedy, because it, in my opinion, is absolutely hilarious. But the romance isn't necessarily what you should, what you'll be getting out of it. It will be just a good time all around. And there are also some similar anime to Kaguya, such as Devil Is a Part Timer and Working or Wagnaria. They are both uh, more comedy focused, slightly less so with Devil Is a Part Timer because there's also the uh, act reverse isekai and the action side of it. Whereas uh, working is much more on the comedy aspect with subtle romance going on as the story progresses. But again, it's not really touched on until right at the end. And all in all, the comedy is what you're going to be getting out of instead of the romance in these. And I've got two more that I want to mention in this video. Um, one of, I've already made a video on, specifically the manga of Konoloto Tamare. Uh, it's a music drama with romance elements. The romance is, again, much so, not as well, not subtle, but it, it, it's very clearly there, but it's not touched upon as much. Instead, it is the you know the developments between the students, you know the characters and the story, and how they develop, how they interact, the drama the club grows through. You know, I, I, I'm repeating a lot of the same points here, but that should really go to say that you know, I I've got <laughs> I know what I want to say, and I'm doing a very bad job at saying it, but uh. Yeah, watch Konolto Tomare. I've already made a video on this manga. Go read it. Go watch it. Seriously, it's fantastic. But the romance isn't the absolute uh, pinnacle of what you'll get out of it. You'll just get a really, really good music anime, like a really good one with a nice little bit of romance on the side. And this is one you should be watching for the music and the drama because it's really good. The cast is also really, really good. And finally, I just want to touch on the Monogatari series because, believe it or not, it is a romance, kind of. A little bit at the start, but not really. 
And hence, if you're watching the Monogatari series for romance, well, you're probably disappointed because there's not a whole lot there. It's a fantastic series. Like, I absolutely love it. But I'll admit that if you want romance, you'll get some. Like, Araragi and uh, Senju Kahara, you know, they are dating from, like, episode 4 or whatever. So, you will get romance. However, th if you're watching the Monogatari series for romance, you've missed a lot of the point. Like, a lot, a lot of the point, and will not get a lot out of it. And so, the Monogatari series is very much a romance anime you should not be watching for the romance, but I believe you very much should watch, if it's your cup of tea. If you don't like that type of thing, then you don't have to. But I believe that you should at least give it a shot, because it is very, very good. The dialogue is fantastic, the characters are incredible, there's so much to unpack with each and every one of them and the things they say, and how they interact with others as the story progresses. It is genuinely a masterpiece of story writing and character development. Like The monologuing that takes place in the Monogatari series is impeccable. And that about does it for a few romance anime I want to recommend that you should be watching, not for the romance, but for other things. Most of the time it's character development and drama. I, I get that I repeated that point a lot, I'm aware. Look, live with it. If you stuck around this far, then uh, leave a like, comment, sub, hit the notification bell. Do whatever you feel like, you know, you do usual YouTube spiel. I will do some more videos like this in the future, where I just talk about a handful of anime in a genre that I think you should be watching, maybe because of that, they're in that genre, or aspects outside of that genre. The mecha genre is a brilliant one to do that for, because a lot of mechas just have mechas because mechas are cool, and it's a great way to hook people in, when there's actually a lot more to the story than, ooh, big robot fight big robot, or ooh, big robot fight kaiju. Um, so yeah, that's all I've already got to say. I've already done the usual shill, uh, the shameless self-promotion, and I've dragged this video out for nearly a full minute, extra than it should have. Um, yeah, well, with all of that said and all of that tangent out of the way, I've been Animosity, you've been you, and I'll see you all next time for another video. Ta-ta, for now.